Under 39 points, Jets Patriots. That's my first bet. It's a low total, but it's really good. And I say this all the time, but lines are always moving. You know, maybe the weather changed, maybe some sharp action changed, right? So weather report change, whatever. Lines are always moving around. And what you're going to notice, and this is the first play I'm locking in, I have four bets total. We're taking under 39 in this game, just the bet in bold with a circle around it, is the first thing that should jump out to you is all the bookmakers are pricing this from minus 120, right? Or minus one, yeah, minus 120 to minus 154. So we're getting a lot of value on Caesars. And then if we go ahead and we click into the odds, as I typically like to do before I place a bet, what you'll notice is like, hey, you know, there's also a bunch of sports books that have the total a full point lower, right? They have the OU at 30, 38, you know, like on 10 bet, on 888 sport. You know, not all these sports books, some sports books offer these alternate lines like bet 365 um, to give sports bettors more options to wager on, but not all of them do. And what you'll notice is a lot of the bookmakers, basically the entire market has the over-unders kind of, you know, consolidated around 37 half, 38 if they're charging minus 110 juice. So we're picking up a ton of value, you know, being able to get this play at minus 110. And value is all that matters as a sharp better. You know, I say that all the time. Pinnacle Sportsbook has been ripping lower in this game. It's the sharpest, most efficient betting market. They allow arbitrage betting. They allow sharp action. You know, they don't limit betters. It's a very efficient betting market. And you're going to notice, you know, they have this minus 132, only 17 cents in market width. So long story short, you know, you're just looking for value as a sports better. So many people, they try to overcomplicate it with, oh, Mac Jones did this, whatever. It's like as an investor, you're looking for value, right? It's no different in sports betting, but what makes sports betting so fascinating and it's so much easier to make money is you have all these bookmakers. I mean, literally tons of sports books um, offering odds, and they all try to set lines independently to be unique. So what you do, and the easiest way to make money sports betting, is you use all this market information to look for value. You look for those few rare betting opportunities where sports books are slipping up. And of course, you also need multiple accounts. You can see the top three bets on Odds Jam. One is on win bet, bet and bold with a circle around it, and it's college football. One bet is Saudi Arabia, Argentina. So this is um, a World Cup bet on FanDuel. Then you have a play on Caesars. You need more accounts to be successful because all these bookies have different odds. And you never know who's going to be screwing up on what day. So here, Caesar Sportsbook is screwing up. They're giving us way too good of a line. And I can almost assure you this line is going to plummet. They're going to drop their total to over under 38, 37 half, you know, pretty soon to line up with the rest of the market. That's how sports betting works. Typically, like sharp action starts to come in on certain sports books. You know, the bookmakers move markets lower. It's a market, just like the stock market. Supply and demand. Betters express opinions in the market. People buy GameStop. People buy stocks. The price of the stocks go up, right? It's no different in sports betting. If there's a billion dollars bet on the Patriots, lines are going to rip towards them, right? Um... So it's your job as a sharp better to follow the market, follow the line movements, look at all this data as a source of information and hunt for value. And if you look at the entire market, it's very clear that like, yeah, we want to be on this play on Caesars. Another way you can think about it is you can remove the juice from all these bookmakers markets. So DraftKings, they have the under at minus 132 and the over at plus 102 because they offer these alternate markets. So the true line removing the VIG would be minus 115, roughly, right? So that's the juice, right? DraftKings says, hey, if you want to bet over 39, we'll let you bet 100 to win 102. If you want to bet the under 39, you have to bet 132 to win 100. That's the vague, that 30 cent difference. This is no vague. That's what DraftKings believes the true price is before they add in the vig. It's the same way a car dealer looks at a car you bring in and you're trying to sell them. And he's like, well, I think that car's worth, you know, probably $15,000. So that's where I'm going to, you know, I'll, pro I'll hopefully be able to sell it for like $15,000. So I'll give it to you for, or I'll buy it from you for $10,000.
right? That's the business of like a, a dealer, a car dealer. And it's also the business model of the sports books. They give you prices they think are bad. But because all these bookies have different odds from one another, as you can kind of see here, we're able to scan the market, right? And look for value, look for these soft spots on sports books. And especially when Pinnacle, the sharpest bookmaker, uh, same thing as the odds jam column, when they're pricing this line at minus 132, it's just a, you know, it's a play you got to be on. Um, and you can do this for all the sports books. So Pinnacle, what were they? Plus 115, minus 132. So very low market width, lower juice. They have the true line minus 122. You're winning, according to Pinnacle, according to their model, 55% of the time. So that's how sports books work, right? They think in terms of percentages, based on all the volume they're seeing in the market, all their billion dollar sophisticated models, they're determining, okay, here's the probability, the overhits, the underhits. Here's what we think the true odds are, and here's the crappy odds or the odds we're gonna get betters because that has the vig in it, right? It's like me being like, okay, you know, I think your car's worth $10,000, so I'll buy it for 7,000, or I'll sell you that same car for 13,000, right? You're charging a spread. So that's the business of sports books. And the strategy applies to NFL. I just locked in this play, but it also applies to college basketball. Just locked in this play. Texas A&M Commerce, Georgia State, under 138 half. So if you take a look right here, it's right here. So, you know, once again, they're the only sports book, right? You can tell WinBet's just off. Every sports book has the under juice, the under favored, except for WinBet. So clearly something's up. So if you go ahead and you click into the odds, what I like to do is just like see the entire market, you know? Is WinBet just this true pricing discrepancy and we gotta be on that play? Minus 135, minus 116, you know, minus 135s, minus 125s everywhere, we're getting minus 105. That's a no-brainer. And you can see for the sports books that don't offer these alternate spreads, they have the line at over under 137 or 138. You know, Bet Online's a really sharp sports book. They have the total a point and a half lower, right? At 137. So I say this all the time, but like when you're betting at minus 105 juice, you know, it's not like you need to win every bet. You know, minus 110 is more common, but if you look at minus 105, so if we go over to a calculator, um, so what we can do is we can go to an odds converter calculator. When you're betting at minus 105 odds, you only have to win 51.22% of your bets to like break even, to win long term. So this bet is winning over 51.22% of the time. The bookmaker's advantage on you with minus 105 odds, it's just, you know, this is how often you have to win. Another way to think about it is you can imagine if you're betting at plus 200 odds, you have to win one out of three wagers to break even, right? You lose, let's say your unit size is 100 bucks. You bet 100. If your bet loses, you lose 100. So you can lose twice for every time you win because when you win, you're profiting 200. So you have to win one out of three times. Right, so this odds converter calculator tells you your break-even win probability. And then the no vague odds calculator, this is the most important calculator on Odds Jam. I definitely recommend like reading this text and you know really understanding it. But let's say, you know, a market, let's say Pinnacle has a market like minus, you know, 240, and then they have, you know, the other side plus 194. The true odds are minus, or, you know, let's say, I'm trying to think of an example, but we can honestly just move on to the next bet and we'll have another example. Also, I started writing on, you know, kind of odds jam, so you can check that out. If you're interested in, you know, profitable sports betting strategy, um, stuff like that, I write a lot in this, like, you know, or I'm at least starting to, in this, um, you know, betting education section, just like, you know, pieces of advice, tips, if you don't only wanna watch videos. So let's continue to go through. Um, the next play I have is my max play. So this is Troy minus 14. It's a college football. I hammered it for $5,000. They let me bet more money. So I took it. I say this all the time, but like more bets with an edge, the better. You know, the more bets you can place with an edge, the better. Um, so this is the next play I locked in. 1.97% profit margin. And if you go ahead and you click into the odds, you notice the same thing. Hey. All the sports books are pricing this, you know, 
minus 122 or worse, and most bookies have the line at 15, right? Pinnacle has this minus 128. So we're finding value enough to beat the VIG. Like, I understand as a sharp better, you know, I'm not going to win every bet. Um, Odds Jam has a bet tracker, you know, and um, what you can do now is you can sync your sports books, not every sports book, but like you can see like here, it automatically syncs bets from certain sports books, has this functionality and grades them as wins or losses. So I had the Pacers plus 100, then I lost, you know, four grand on the Heat, then I won some money on the Bucks, whatever. And like, it'll automatically grade these bets as wins or losses, which is cool. Um, but I recommend, you know, doing that because a lot of people, you know, like I at this point have placed so many bets, you know, when I started out betting, I was betting five, $10 and just like tracking my profit and loss of all my EV bets and stuff like that. Like I'm used to the losing streaks and the winning streaks and the variance, but for a lot of people, it's discouraging to lose three bets in a row, even though they were good bets, but like. You know, you don't view decisions you made um, based on what, you, you know, the future holds. If you go to college and there's, you know, a disaster at the college and I don't know, you get the point. But like, um, that's not because you went to the wrong college or whatever. It's because whatever happened at the college happened at the college. But anyways, the point is like you can make a good bet and it can lose. This play's incredible. We're getting minus 110. Lines have been moving towards Troy. Pinnacle, it's an ARB2. You know, it's just a crazy bet. Um, so yeah. And again, also another thing is like this market's moving. It's actually pretty fascinating. If we go over to college football on the screen, I'll kind of be able to show you, but this is, you know, probably the biggest bet I've had in a while. Um, so this should be a fun one, but if we head over here and then we go to college football, what I think is pretty cool, pretty useful to see is just like the line movements because lines, right, they're not they're not static. This is a market. It's like the stock market, but it's open 24-7. You can bet whenever. Lines are always moving. Players are getting injured. You know, sometimes I've gotten up at 3 a.m., you know, checked Dodge Jam, and there's just some insane bets, right? And, like, bookies are asleep, whatever. And, like, if there's an injury or something like that, you can sometimes find some incredible plays. But here you can see, like, line movements are kind of highlighted, in red and green on this screen. Um, so some of these games are already live, but you can see here, it's like, okay, like lines are repping towards Liberty against Virginia Tech today in college football. Um, or it looks like this game may have just started or is about to start. So you can see here, Kentucky, Georgia. Wow, Georgia's only minus, you know, lines kind of moving slightly towards Kentucky on Pinnacle. So we can continue to go through, you know, just using data, um, to make all of our plays. And again, like you're not going to beat the sports books um, with your gut. It's it's just not going to happen, right? Um, these sports books have invested hundreds of millions of dollars into their, you know, like setting their models and stuff like that. The way you beat them is you understand that most plays aren't profitable, right? Because sports books charge the vague out of the millions of odds on Odds Jam, like millions of odds updating in real time on Odds Jam. Most of these plays aren't profitable, right? Um, they're not at all. So you have to look for those rare few betting opportunities where one sportsbook is asleep at the wheel. And it's not like there's a ton of them. Typically there's, you know, five or so maybe positive EV bets per sportsbook. So you're kind of like day trading, right? You're hunting for those few spots with value. Sometimes the value is more in college football, sometimes college basketball. You know, you're an investor. You wake up every day, you look for value. Um, so yeah. And then we'll go to my final play, which is Missouri State minus one. So you may be like, hey, the EV percentage is lower. Sure. But what you'll notice is if we click into it, you know, it's very clear that, you know, WinBet is asleep at the wheel here. Most sports books bet online, a very sharp sports book. They're kind of in line with... Um, with, you know, Pinnacle right here. Pinnacle has this minus 125. You know, they have roughly similar odds. Um, you know, we're taking, so some sports books like Five Dimes, another sharp offshore sports book, they have Missouri State as a minus two and a half point spread favorite. So I'm very confident this bet is beating the juice, right? So there's an EV aspect, but then there's also like this confidence aspect, which is okay, you know the bet's good, 
but like how confident are you? And when you have so many sports books all telling you the same thing, yeah, this bet is profitable, even if it's 1% profitable, a 1% return in a day is 30% a month. So if you have really high confidence that it's profitable, I'll hit that all day long, you know? So I loaded it up for 2.2K. Here are the four bets I placed. So we have um, college football, college basketball, NFL. <laughs> so awesome. I love love it. $151 in profit margin on these plays. They're all right here. Let me know if you have questions. Let's make money.